Hello and welcome to CS264 Software Design. This is week eight and this is lecture 16. It's a continuation from 15 and I'm just going to follow on with the slides where I stopped last time. So I think we were around about slide 14. So let's go through to this and yeah, let's start here. So we talked about um, the software design patterns and I wanted to to talk to you a little bit about two behavioral ones that are very much tied to the assignments that you've been working on. And these are the command and memento patterns. And these two behavioral patterns are very similar. Well, they're similar if, because they can both be used for undo and redo functionality in some application. They're, they're, different. they're, they're similar in the fact that they're both behavioral, but actually, you know, they are quite different um, patterns. So command really um, is all about issuing commands, okay? And, um, and memento is about storing snapshots. With command, of course, we can use um, some stacks to, or, or any data structure you like and prefer to be able to store a list of commands and then perform an undo and redo by performing the reverse of that command. So really it's, um, it's, uh, they're quite different, but they can be used for the same task. Um, so anyway, the memento pattern, as I said already, it's used to store snapshots that come of some complete object state. And in your case, for example, for your assignments, we're looking at the canvas that contains some shapes. And the command pattern then, instead of storing full state, you know, when used in an undo redo scenario, it actually stores the difference between states. And that's the commands. So that those deltas, if you like. And the difference are the differences are stored as actions, and these would be your UI commands. They can be applied and unapplied. Um, and you can use the command, of course, um, the design pattern, even without having an undo or redo functionality. They're just about commands. So um, just another view of this then would be in terms of we have this, this uh, array or list or stack or, well, you know, um, whatever data structure you prefer for the memento pattern. And we have a current place in the stack. And then by moving backwards, we're able to undo the state. And moving forwards, we redo the state until we get to the end, of course, here. And with the um, command pattern, then we have the current state. And then when we issue a, an unapply a command, we essentially undo. And with the apply, we're redoing or doing, as the case may be. So we use Memento to manage an unlimited history of our application state. It's fairly straightforward and it's more intuitive, I guess, than some other approaches. So every time a history entry needs to be generated, we crop the history list to the current position and then we take a snapshot of the current state and append it to our history list. And that's independently of any actions that have been used. Using the command software design patterns, all the information to perform an action is encapsulated into an object. So we have two stacks, an undo and a redo stack. And whenever an action is performed, the action and its reverse are first encapsulated in some kind of object, and then that object is applied to the model state, changing the model. And afterwards, that's pushed onto the stack. And at this point, the redo stack is also cleared since the information there is now outdated. I said before, if you were in, in lecture last time, if you're interested in looking at history and state, um, you can look at this really good um, uh, article by Luca Seaman from 2017 on solving history, a hard problem. And, you know, this um, this author, Seaman, he actually he gives you an alternative approach again to um, memento and command for undo and redo. Because the patterns are patterns in themselves. They're behaviors and the way you, your, your programs can work or certain parts of your program can work. Um, and we're just using those patterns for an undo and redo. Okay. So the pros, I guess, for the, the memento is that the implementation is independent of the applied action. So once it's implemented, we can add actions without worrying about breaking any kind of history. Um, it's fast to advance to a predefined position in history. And that's interesting when the actions applied between the current and the desired history position are computationally expensive. That's really, really useful. In terms of uh, memento cons, the memory requirements can be significantly higher compared to other approaches because depending on the size of that object that you're actually saving or the multiple objects you might be saving, then, you know, could take up a huge amount of memory. Okay, the loading time can be slow again if the snapshots are large. Okay, so for our application with with our um, canvas, it's not too bad, I guess. You know, unless you're dealing with millions of shapes and you're not for this particular assignment, so it's an okay thing to do. But it's always good to know with all patterns what the pros and cons of those are, and really that's why the slide is here. Second of all, 
we look at command, the pros are the memory footprint is really small. We only need to store the changes to the model. And if these are small, then the history stack is also really small. The cons, though, is we can't go to some arbitrary position directly. We have to need to unapply the history stack until we get there. And that can be time consuming. It's very different with the, you know, we can actually choose a point in history to go back to if we want it with, with um, Memento. So every action and its reverse needs to be encapsulated in some object. So if your action is non-trivial, it can be very difficult. And sometimes, you know, some actions is fun, are, are easy, but the reverse might actually be very, very, very tricky. So mistakes then in the reverse are really hard to debug also because you can easily result in some fatal crashes. So even simple actions usually involve a good amount of complexity. So for example, in the case of a graphics editor, the object for adding to the canvas needs to store what was added, what color was selected, what was overwritten, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it can be tricky. And it can be challenging to implement and memory intensive when the actions don't have a simple reverse. And, you know, you could look at examples online and find where, where that might be the case. Again, I wanted you to do um, memento and command for the same problem because, you know, it gives you a sense if the problem remains, remains unchanged, then the difficulties or the pros and cons of a particular method become clearer. Well, that's a strategy, I guess, in the assignments. So when we look at the patterns then, and a lot of the time I did say to you, all of the patterns have a UML diagram. So we have an originator, which creates some, this is memento or commands, okay? And um, um, this is command. So this one up here is memento, this is command, okay? So you can see the patterns here, and this will be the UML pattern, um, running about how, how it actually works. And then this is the command one where you have some invoker that creates a command and the command is, a, is an interface and the command has a concrete command one and this, this receiver receives this command. And you know, this is how it works. Okay, and with the, um, the uh, memento, you have some uh, caretaker, which is responsible for talking to an originator, which has an originator, or, you know, and that originator creates a memento, and that memento is the current state that you're interested in looking at. So you can save a state and restore a state, okay? And then uh, you can see here how they talk to each other. So this is the sequence diagram. You have a query tracker talking to an originator. Originators create mementos, and you're able to get the various states or set states. And so it's fairly straightforward in terms of telling you how it works. And then with the command pattern, you have a sequence diagram where the invoker talks to the command, sends the command to the receiver and so forth. So it's not too bad. Very simple sample sequence diagram here. So we can describe both the structure of the participating classes and the objects and the different design patterns using, using the UML. And of course, we can have the interaction sequence diagrams that where we have objects you know, here that are created from the class patterns. And we typically use class patterns to describe the classes and objects and the sequence diagrams to provide a timeline of how the object instances communicate for different actions. So they're static model, here are the static models on the left here, and on the right we have the dynamic models or the interaction models. The standard class and sequence diagrams for command and memento, these are from Wikipedia, but you'll find them elsewhere. And I prefer these ones, um, which we have from the book, Dive Into Design Patterns, that I recommended from Alexander Schwetz. It's a 2020 book, it's quite new. Um, so it's a lovely, lovely book. And here we have our static class pattern here. You know, so we have the invoker class and it um, uh, invokes commands, which, you know, essentially are uh, an interface. Sometimes you see this is I command. And here are some concrete versions of the command, which is a receiver parameters. And then, you know, tells you how to execute that command. Have another one, command two. And the client is responsible for, for um, managing everything here. Okay, so it's not too bad. Here's how you might actually have one working for um, an editor. Okay, so where you have buttons, you have shortcuts, you have an editor that has a copy command, a cut command, a paste command, an undo command, and each of these are um, are instantiations. This is a not an interface actually. This is a, an abstract class, and we know this because it's a class with the italicized title here. And then we have a history of commands, you know, which um, we can save, and the application uses the editor, they have all these commands, and then our application allows us to be able to, um, to do this. So it's nice in order to be able to, to make that work. Let me just drop that down, okay. And uh, so this is a, a real instantiation, I guess, of this, okay, in a way. And if we want, we can actually have a look here at the command. So this is the book, Design Patterns, and this is the chapter, okay? 
And then I need to just stop this because I'm after doing something strange here. Let me just go to here. Let me go to my Zoom. Under accessibility. And let's click on Zoom. And we see that in order to toggle the Zoom, it's Command Shift 8, and it's gone. Good. So, as I was saying, here's the book, Design Patterns. Um, here we have um, our command page, and it tells you all about the problem, tells you about the intent, the problem, and the solution, and then it gets formally into you know some real world analogy, and here we have this nice diagram. Well, I've zoomed this one up here so we can have a look, and you can have a look and see the sender class that's responsible for initiating requests, um, and we have the command interface, the sender's here, okay, that's the invoker, in other words, and the command interface that just has a single method telling us about executing the command, we have all the concrete commands, command one and command two, and we have the receiver that contains some logic, and then um, that's what happens with the commands, and then the client creates and configures all the concrete command objects and all of the parameter handling and all that. So you can have a look at this in a little bit more detail. It's just a, a blown up version of this one here, and you have some pseudocode, which you've seen I copied, and here's some pseudocode for class as well. So um, uh, what I decided to do, of course, as well, is that you know you can have a look at the command in C sharp because we're interested in C sharp here, and then that would be our version. And here's a, a sample example of a C sharp example. And you'll notice that um, in lesson 8.4, I actually did a, a different version of this right, to show you how to use commands with shape. And you may have used that for your assignment, of course, already. So let's go back and have a look at the have a look at the next one, which is. Memento, and again, same thing again. Here we have the the um, class diagrams, and we have an originator and, and a memento and a caretaker, you know, and that handles all the history here. And then you can see that you might have an editor taking some snapshot and using some commands that makes a backup, for example. And we can move back and forth through these. And again, we can go back to our our dive into design patterns book and look at the memento. Again, we see the intent, the problem, the solution. And again, the structure and some pseudocode as well. Okay, and we can have a, a look through this. And um, I'm going to look at the originator that produces snapshots of its own state. And we have the memento, which is the object, the, the value object, that snapshot of the originator's, originator's state. It's practice to make the memento immutable. Okay, pass it the data only once via the constructor. So we have this one, and then we have the caretaker, knows when and why to capture the state, but also when the state should be restored. So the caretaker keeps track of the originator's history by storing the stack of mementos. So when the originator has to travel back in history, the caretaker is responsible for fetching the topmost memento from the stack and passing it to the originator's restoration method. Or of course, you can, as we saw earlier in lectures, um, slides, you can actually choose to go to a particular point in, in time. Um, and move directly to that state if you wish. And that's a really useful feature of, of Memento. Okay. Again, if you look at the Memento in C Sharp, there's a nice example again here. And um, you can just work down through this example um, if you want it for C Sharp. I have a different example that I'm going to show you a little bit later now, but you'll see something like um, the originator class. You will see the I Memento, and you'll have a concrete Memento. And you'll have a caretaker class as well. And there are lots of other examples online. You can have a look. For example, you can look at um, Do Factory as well, which gives some nice examples as well. And there, you know, you can look at um, loads of them. You know, here's another undo and redo using C sharp using a, a, a memento. Here's another one for you know simple undo resystem. So you can search and find lots of these, and you'll find sometimes they use command pattern. Here's a command pattern, and sometimes they use memento, but it's up to you as to which one you want to work with. And of course, for your assignment, you're going to have to know and use both. And for your final examination, you're going to need to know how to use both as well. OK, so the code examples are highly dependent on the application. So if you look at some of the examples that you see, you may find that, well, yeah, it works well for this particular uh, example, but it, I, I couldn't just copy and paste the code So um, into my example. So you may find lots of things online, but you won't find one that deals with shapes on canvases. So you can't just copy and paste the code. So you have to understand the strategy. You have to understand the intent. Then you have to look at the implementation. And you'll find that it's always dependent on the application. 
You could do your best to try to do that. And I hope in a couple of the lessons that follow, I'll show you how to, to do this. Okay. It's unlikely, as I said, you'll find some ready-made solution that you can deploy for your application. That's why it's important to understand the patterns. You really need to understand the example that's used, how the design for this example is motivated by the individual design pattern and the requirements of the application itself. When you've done that, you should examine the implementation and understand how the implementation reflects the model design. You've done that a few times to develop an understanding of how to realize implementations from design patterns in your applications. That's why I often ask you then in assignments to generate the PUML and some class diagram for your code, your resulting assignment code, and for you know your final examination, your code exam, and um, you'll also be asked to generate the UML. And to be able to point out and show me in that design that actually, yeah, these are the these are the classes and everything that meets with the class patterns that we um we expect to see when we work with with um this a particular pattern. So you know when if I look at this one here and I said this is the, the general structure for command design pattern, software design pattern. If I run my program and write my program, and then I start generating the POML from this, and I get my class diagram, I should be able to see something that reflects the invoker and commands, a command interface and something, if I'm basing an undo, redo, or just a command-based application around, um, around this the software design pattern. If I don't see it, or you don't see it, then you're not probably you know realizing the pattern. Okay, and that's the whole point of this. So. The other point of this, of course, is that once you get to know and understand patterns, you'll be able to spot them in other developers' work and immediately determine how that code is expected to work. It gives you a sense of being able to read and understand well, what's going on and how it's expected to work and how you expect it to work. So if you look at any of the patterns, for example, the Wikipedia or any of the text that I've given you, you'll see example code. You need to understand the problem and the pattern in context. This is really crucial, please. Remember, you need to understand the problem and the design pattern in context because all of these contextual implementations matter. And there, that there are differences, there are nuances associated with that. And um, you can see from this though, that design patterns are an excellent method for communicating purpose. It's really crucial. And that's why we have them. They give us guidance and communication as a communication tool. Okay, so we learned about the software design patterns. We did it also in lecture 15. And we learned about two different behavior design patterns, command, and memento. And we looked at the ease in the context. Okay. Thank you very much for looking at lecture 15 and lecture 16. We leave it there.